Let me tell you, I'll tell you what your future is by what you're speaking now. What you speak consistently, I can tell you what your future will be. If you keep on saying, God said, I am the head, I am the head. God said, I am the head, I am the head. God said, I am the head, I'm the head. God said, I'll be on top and not at the bottom. I'll always be. If you keep on saying it, you'll end up being on top. Believe me. This is not my candy coated, you know, philosophy. This is the Bible. What you say is what you will get. Amen. Words are carries of hope toward our future. Listen, she said, it is well. She decreed it. She decreed it is well. And I was fascinated by the word decree. And I looked it up in the dictionary. And the dictionary meaning, listen, the dictionary defines a decree as a statement of truth that carries the authority of a court order. A decree is a statement of truth that carries the authority of a court order. Now, this is dictionary meaning. Now, let's apply it to the kingdom, all right? The kingdom of God. Now, you see, in the kingdom of God, a decree is really when a child of God decrees the revealed word of God. In the kingdom of God, what is a decree? A decree is, where, is really when, please listen, a decree is really when a child of God decrees the revealed word of God. When you say what the word says, when you speak what the word reveals, that is a decree. Remember when Elisha called this servant, I mean, sorry, this lady to himself, he said, this time next year. Amen? So you see, the very conception of the child first began with a decree. What was the decree? This time next year you will have a child. Was it Elisha's desire or was it God's will? God's will. Elisha never spoke to her and said, I want to give you. The only thing he wanted to do was talk to the king and talk to the commander. But she said, I don't need all that. And when Gehazi said that she needs a child, now Elisha knew he doesn't have the power to give her the ability to bear a child. Her husband is old. So he said, God, what do I do? God said, call her in. You see, he was acting on a command from the high court of heaven. The supreme court of heaven said, I'm going to give her a child, call her in and tell her this time next year she will have a child. So you see, the very conception of the baby in a womb began with a decree. She decreed it as well. Proverbs 18.21 says, Dead and alive in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. First Peter 3.10 says, for he who would love life and see good days. Watch this. For those of you that love life, you love a good life and you love good days, God's not against it. Some people think it's a cardinal sin, you know, to have, to desire to have a good life and good days. No, that's Bible. God is a good God and God wants you to have a good life and God wants you to have good days. And may I say to you, God wants you to have every good second. Thank you for the enthusiasm. Oh my goodness. I'm praying for a revival in you. For he who would love life and see good days, how do I get it? Doesn't come automatically. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Brothers and sisters, words hold power. And reflect what we believe in our heart. Words hold power. Let me say that again. Words hold power. And reflect what we believe in our hearts. So your word is a reflection of what is in your heart. This mother tells the husband it is well. She was decreeing. 
it as well. And she repeats the same words to Gehazi when Elisha said, go and ask the later, lady, is it well with her? Is it well with her husband? Is it well with her child? And she said, it is well. Was it? Was everything well? No. But she was decreeing the will of God. What was the decree? In the kingdom of God, a decree is when a child of God decrees the revealed word of God. And the will of God and the word of God was that it is well. Does that make sense? No. When everything is wrong and you're saying it is well, it does not make sense, my friend, at least not to the natural mind. This woman had great character. She had great wealth. She had great faith. But fourthly, she had great boldness. Look at verse 25 and 26. She had great boldness. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, please now run to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the, servant, uh, with the child? And she said, it is well. We see great boldness. Why? She went directly to the man of God. She was so bold. She said, I got to find that prophet. I got to find him and give him a piece of my mind. I got to get to him. See, she wasn't entrusted in speaking to his servant. She was not interested in Gehazi. Why? Because she recognized she would not bring up the matter to someone who couldn't solve the issue. That's why I call this woman great. She recognized that she wouldn't, she would not open up the matter to someone who couldn't solve the problem, the issue. No use going and sharing your problem with people who cannot solve it. The mistake we make is telling everybody of what we are going through. I'm telling you, stop that. Go, to, go only to the person who can solve your problem and tell him what you're going through. But don't meet every brother and sister along the way and say, you know what? My child died. You know what? My child is doing this. You know what? My husband is doing that. You know what? My husband, my wife is doing. No, don't do that. Don't walk around telling everybody because everybody don't have the power to solve your problem. Are you hearing me, church? The, you need to learn like this woman to go directly only to the man of God. And what I mean is the man of God is the word of God. In that day, they didn't have a Bible, so she had to go to the prophet. But today we have the word of God. Go to the word. She went to the power source. She wasn't interested in speaking to Gehazi. She said, you are not my... You have no answer to my problem. Get away from me. It's well. Just keep, get out of this. Get out of my way. I need to see the prophet. Glory to God. She wasn't interested in speaking to Gehazi. She recognized he couldn't solve a problem. Secondly, the reason she was great in her boldness is because she knew where the power of God rested. She knew the power of God rested on the man of God. Not on his servant. She knew the power of God rested upon Elisha. Verse 27. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. That is, she grabbed him firmly. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, leave her alone. For her soul is in deep distress and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? You see, she had great boldness. She said, did I come and ask you for a child? Did I ask a favor for the things I did for you? Did I not tell you, don't deceive me, don't flatter me? She said, you spoke a decree. And awaken something within me. I was ready to endure life without a child. I had prepared my mind. I had tried for this so much. I was disappointed many times. And I told you don't disappoint me. But something that you spoke. Awaken something within me. I came to let you know. The rhema of God will awaken faith in you. 
Even though you have settled, okay, this is the life I believe. This is how I'm going to be for the rest of my life. But sometimes God will send somebody with a rhema and that word will quicken something inside of you and you will end up conceiving the miracle you wanted. But now she believed, she birthed, but the child died. What happens when the child dies? I'll say this and close. Not only did she have great boldness, watch the next thing, verse, verse 29. Then she said to Gehazi, uh, sorry, then he, that is Elisha, said to Gehazi, get yourself ready, take my stuff in your hand. And that's a problem. That's a problem right there. Elisha says, go get ready, take my stuff in your hand. That's a problem right there. We'll see what, what it is. And be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer him. But lay my stop on the face of the child. She had great substance. She had great character. She had great faith. She had great boldness. And the next principle is she had great perseverance. She had great perseverance. Why do I say that? Because you see, Elisha sent Gehazi with his staff to restore the boy. This didn't satisfy the woman. She said, nothing doing. Verse 30. And the woman and the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. She said, no, 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 no. What I came to you for is not that you would put your stuff in your servant's hand and send him. She said, no, that's not going to satisfy me. She said, Lo, listen, I came for Elisha and a substitute will not do. My brothers and sisters, do you have that commitment? Do you have that determination that I will not settle for a substitute? Are you there, church? You know, we always settle for substitute. Something is better than nothing. If you get old and you don't get a, an, a, get a boy by the time of you're, you're 35, you know, the wrong man is better than no man at all. Are you getting what I'm saying? That substitute. You see, I have, I have no choice now. So even if it's the wrong man, at least I have a man. Yes, he's the wrong man, but wrong man is better than no man. We end up, you know, getting into a hell of a relationship because we have decided something is better than nothing. My friend, not in the kingdom of God. Not in the kingdom of God. It's not something that is better than nothing. It's the thing that is better than all things. The thing that you need is from God. The thing that you want is from God. The thing that you require can come from God. And all you got to do is stay focused on him. She said, I don't want a substitute. I want you to come. And I'm not leaving until you come with me. And he had to go. Perseverance will always pay off. Amen. Determine not to leave without Elisha. What do I mean by that? Determine not to leave this church today without the word that you need from God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Watch this. I'll say this and close quickly. Now, verse 31. Now, Gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore, he went back to him and told him, saying, The child has not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, there was the child lying dead on his bed. Please listen. The staff was powerless. The staff was powerless. Two reasons. Number one, because it was in the hands of El Gehazi. That's why I stressed on that word. Take my stuff in your hand. Wrong! Because a right thing in the wrong hand is still a dead thing. Gehazi was not Elisha. Gehazi did not have the relationship with God like Elisha had. Gehazi was not God's appointed in a prophet. Elisha was. You see, when 
The staff is in the wrong hand. It's powerless. Number two, the second reason why the staff was powerless. Because God's power does not rest on a piece of wood. God's power does not rest in a piece of wood. It rests on the man of God, the prophet. May I say to you today, the power of God is not resting on a man of God. The power of God is in the word of God. Because what the prophet represented was God himself. I am saying, take your eyes off the staffs. Oh my goodness. Please listen. Many are trusting in powerless staffs today. To bring life. Many are trusting in powerless staffs today to bring life. But listen, life can only come through the power of God. Too many of you are trusting in people that are powerless. They are like that powerless staff. Stop putting your faith in men and women of God and start putting your faith in the word of God because God and the word are the same. Say an amen if you believe me. Because we adore men and women of God. Nothing wrong with that. Honor men and women of God. But they are not your source. They are their channels to the source. Do I have a witness? I am not your source. I'm your pastor, yes. I teach you the word of God. But I'm not your source. God is. I said God is. Listen. The staff was powerless, but God wasn't powerless. God wasn't powerless. Verse 33 to 37 and I'll close. He went, I'm not going to preach anymore, all right? He went and therefore shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. So he went up and lay on the child, put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on on his eyes and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child and the, child, and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth, back and forth in the house and again went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, call the Shunammite woman. So he called her and when she came in to him, he said, pick up your son. So she went in, fell at his feet and bowed to the ground. Then she picked up her son and walked out. Listen, miracles will never make sense to the, to the human mind. Miracles will never make sense to the human mind. Write that down somewhere, please. Miracles will never make sense to the human mind. And one last principle. Write this down as well. The first one is miracles will never make sense to the human mind. Here's my last statement. The severity of circumstances never limits the ability of God or God's ability. The severity of circumstances never limits God's ability. No matter how severe your circumstance is, it cannot limit the miracle working ability of God. In fact, let me tell you, the more severe your situation is, the more the power of God is displayed. That's why I made that statement. I said that statement. The severity of circumstances does not limit God's ability. The more severe it is, the greater the demonstration of God's miracle working power in your life. Learn to be like this woman and speak. You see, it was not Elisha that brought the, the, the child back to life. It was her confession, a consistent confession. It is well, it is well. The miracle is in your mouth. Let's rise to our feet, please.